welcome to Minnesota. Just wanted to kind of get your overall thoughts on how you fit in to this roster and what you see your opportunity to be maybe a veteran leader on a team with a lot of young faces as well. Uh, I, I mean, first and foremost, uh, I think the, you know, the offensive schemes that Coach Finch runs uh, complements everybody on the team. Uh, as far as fitting in, I, I, I play with everybody. So fitting in won't be a problem. Um, I think my biggest focus is, uh, you know, saying I locked in, we can be each and every night consistently over in, you know, a preseason season. And eventually, you know, we do the right things, we get to the playoffs. So, um, you know, basketball is basketball, that won't change, but everything else in the middle, I think if you can control that, put yourself in a position to win a lot of games. Hey, Pat, you've had your teams, all of them that you've been on have had a lot of success over the years. What can you bring just as far as maybe a winning mentality to a team that hasn't had nearly as much success in recent years? I think that's the key right there, just the winning mentality. Uh, the things that, uh, you know, uh, been on a playoff team, been on a contender team, been on a team that's trying to win a championship that, you know, teams don't really prepare for, kind of bring that type of niche to this team. And, you know, we got a group, a nice young, young core. And, um, you know, to consistently get what you want to get from everybody every, every single day, uh, puts you in a position uh, not only to be successful this year, to be successful throughout the year. So I think that's the key. Pat, uh, are you more comfortable coming off the bench or being in the starting lineup? And uh, I say that because on the one hand, you could be paired next to D'Angelo Russell, or you could be the lead guy in the second unit, uh, your catch and shoot guy as well as a playmaker. Is there a comfort zone either way in your role? No, I think all that's up to the coach for sure. And, uh, you know, I impact winning. So however that plays out, you know, it ain't about who starts, it's about who finish. But if I'm fortunate to be a starter, if, and if I'm not, you know, I know I'm going to finish games, and that's the most important. Dane Moore, Blue Wire. Pat, um, you, you've been very vocal about playoffs. You just brought it up there again. And you've been a part of teams that have kind of had to scratch and claw their way, you know, there over the course of this season. How, what, what is that process like, being on a team that every night knowing, you know, we've got to make the most out of this game to get to, a, to, get to that goal down the, by the end of the season? I, I feel like it puts pressure on you. Not, not bad pressure, but good pressure. Uh, being able to be locked in every day, every practice, being able to be locked in every shoot around, uh, limiting mistakes defensively, uh, you know, uh, the togetherness as a team, I think that's all a part of, of a winning culture. And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to be on really, really, really good teams. And I've been fortunate to be on teams where, you know, not so good, but we made the best out of it. And each team and, you know, the players, none of those characteristics change. Uh, you apply those to the game, you'll be successful. Hey, Pat, Jack Borman from SB Nation. Um, just how are your existing relationships with both Chris and Gerson, um, you know, as a leader on the team, really helped kind of instill the values that, that they're looking for um, from leadership of this team from, from day one of training camp? I think it all started, I mean, you know, and I hate to take talk about other teams, but for me, you know, the relationship with these guys, of course, started from Houston. Obviously, you know, Gerson, he's the one who came and really, you know, got me from overseas, you know, uh, Coach Finch, you know, I was fortunate to play on the, you know, on the Kevin McHale. We spent some time here also, but, you know, lead assistant, you know, Coach Finch, he ran off. And so very familiar what he has to offer. And like I said before, when it comes to basketball, all that stuff doesn't change. You know, you get on the basketball, you're a basketball player. And, and we're trying to be the best, best basketball team there in the NBA this year. And that's our focus. Uh, Britt Robson, yeah, athletic again. Um, you mentioned winning culture. What do you think of the, the, basically the cornerstones of building a winning culture? Accountability and uh, honesty. I think those are the first two. If we can be honest with each other, if we can talk to each other in a way where we both, <clears throat> players both understand and get the most out of each other without, you know, you know, a, 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 you know, just talking back or backlash and accountability. You know, if you're supposed to be the low man, you be the low man, that's your job. If he's a low man, the person's supposed to have his back, have his back. And I think that goes from top to bottom. And I think if you do that, uh, like I said, you do those two things. You, and it's not only the players. You know, people get it mixed up. They think, you know, when it comes to basketball, it's just about the players. It's the whole organization. So, you know, from top to bottom organization, if, it, if, if everyone's accountable, we put ourselves in a position to be successful. Chris, uh, what, did, what does it mean to you as a coach to get a, a veteran like Patton who has been in the playoff battles and also obviously has some real defensive chops for a team that wants to make real big strides in that area? Well, I mean, it's a great get for us. 
Gersh and I would text each other during the playoffs and it was like, we need this. We're watching Pat play. We need some of that. You know, that's what our team needs. We got to have that type of grit. Um, what I love about Pat is that, you know, the same approach he had day one coming into the league to prove himself is the same approach he takes out to the floor every single night, no matter what the stakes are, no matter who he's playing alongside. And he's not afraid of any challenge that's out there on the floor, whether it be a game, an opponent, a, cir a circumstance. And, um, you know, that kind of fortitude goes a long way, gives courage to your whole team. And Gerson, Pat mentioned how you brought him over. Uh, what did you see in him all those years ago that, and, and what, how have you seen his career grow to where it is now? I mean, to be fair, Pat deserves credit for that. I mean, he played his way into a situation where he got an NBA team's attention and we had tracked him through the draft. We tracked him internationally. And at the end of the day, and to me, it's a little uh, ironic, but the reason we brought him to Houston, the same reason we're bringing him to Minnesota. We need that urgency. We need that competitiveness. We need that fire. And like coach said, that's who he is. I mean, there's no difference to him day one to 10 year in the league. Uh, that's what he's going to bring. But his ability, his experience is where he's been throughout the league to impact not only on the defensive end, but the offensive end. Uh, his fit with us of how we play, uh, the tenacity, uh, the intensity, we needed that as a group. We've got a good group of guys. We've got good talent, but we need to take that next step. That's what we've talked about all off season. And we need to balance out the roster with good vets that have had success and that know what it takes defensively our need for improvement it comes with what he's just talking about it's the accountability from top to bottom it's the guys doing what they need to do day in and day out it's it's hard to get an acquisition where you pick up a guy that can change the whole defense we have to change the culture we have to change the environment and we have a guy that has the urgency that fights that works that'll do whatever it takes to make sure that we're successful Pat, uh, Jace Ryder here at the St. Paul Pioneer Press. In your experience, that competitiveness, that fire that you bring, does that rub off on all of your teammates? For the most part. For the most part. I mean, it, 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 it comes organically. And then when I say organically, it comes from a, from, from a place where it's not, I'm not trying to, you know, put you down. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to win. You know, I, so I'm, I'm just trying to win. I made the playoffs every year since I've been in the NBA, and I don't, I don't expect that to change. Chris, you have a, a group that has a, a lot of guys who both can play point guard, bring the ball up the floor, but can also simultaneously kind of play off the ball there. How do you kind of see that balance working with the kind of group of point guards or lead ball handlers you have, including Pat? Yeah, we're spoiled for choice. I think what I love about our roster what, um, is that we have interchangeable parts. But we, we don't – I mean, positionless basketball has been kind of, kind of come, you know, in vogue in the last couple of years, but – um, you know, we don't want D'Angelo on the ball exclusively. You know, we, we want him to be out there off the ball where he can also utilize a whole part of his skill set. So um, we feel like we can put three point cards on the floor, given particularly when you I think of the defensive um, prowess that Pat brings, because we can slide him to any matchup we want on the perimeter. He's not afraid of giving up six, seven inches to battle. Um, so this is this is great because you can get your best talent on the floor and you can play the matchup game and you can then, you know, kind of cycle through lineups and, uh, at different points in the game. Uh, we're going to take our next question from the Zoom. Chris Hein, go ahead. Question is for Pat. Uh, Pat, how how can this team improve defensively? What qualities do you think? Uh, this team needs to have in order for, for it to improve from being one of the lowest defensive rated teams last year? Um, I say to be students of the game first, right? Understand what's going on, understand positioning, understand spacing, understand timing. And once you understand those things, when you're a student of the game, you're able to become a teacher and you're able to kind of, when you're a defensive player, you were in the NBA for a long time, you're able to teach the defense or teach that position. And, you put yourself in the position to be successful defensively. So I think we have to be students first. Uh, when I mean students, I mean, you know, we have to listen to what, you know, the coaching staff wants, have to buy in, definitely have to buy in. Whether if it's good for you, what might be good for you might not be good for the team. So uh, first is buying in, and after that, you know, you buy in, you be a student, everything else takes care of itself. Uh, we'll go last question on the Zoom to Leonardo. Leonardo, go ahead. Hi, Pat. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. 
But what is the role you would like to have in the team this season? Uh, I, I don't know. At the end of the season, you look, you know, what changed in the roster. You know, we, TP here, we made the playoffs. I don't think it's about a role. I just want to win. That's it. I, I know it, it sounds I'm, I'm so simple, but, I mean, that's, that's the only thing I like to do is win. I like to win when playing cards. I like to win video games. I like to win shooting drills. I just like to win. So, uh, whatever role we're winning is, is a part of. All right, thank you for those questions. Uh, time for a photo op with Chris and Gerson and Pat up on the, here on the stage. All right, Pat, thank you very much. Let's welcome uh, Torian Prince to the stage. Torian has appeared in 301 regular season games over six NBA seasons with Atlanta, Brooklyn, and Cleveland, averaging 11 points and four rebounds a game. Torian brings positional flexibility and a reliable outside shot. Last season in 29 games with Cleveland and 12 with Brooklyn, he hit 40% of his three-point shots. The 6-7 forward saw his best season with the Hawks during the 17-18 season. He played all 82 games while averaging a career-best 14 points, five rebounds, and three assists per contest. We'll open it up to uh, questions once again. Hey, Torian, John Krasinski with The Athletic. Just wondering when the, when the deal first came down and you found out you're coming to Minnesota, what's the initial reaction? And as you've kind of had a chance to process it, how do you feel about the opportunity here? Um, well, coming in, um, they, I, kn I knew they had a lot of good pieces and obviously Kat and D'Lo and then hearing about the trade with Pat. Um, but my experience on other teams coming to Minnesota is probably one of the toughest places to play. So being on on the team now it, it gives us that advantage and and obviously um moving forward and and pushing and getting past the things that we weren't able well, now i'm saying we but we weren't able to do last season and um now we can finally kind of make that jump hey torian as a new player coming into a franchise who hasn't had a lot of success do you view that as like a challenge as wanting to be part of the the solution i guess to get the to get the team where it hasn't been before oh yeah 100 percent um I'm all for it. Uh, I'm a part of, been a part of tougher things in my life. Um, so this is like, like Pat said, I'm gonna piggyback off of him. It's just basketball. It's about the things in between staying together, um, building that camaraderie and doing what we have to do to get uh, wins. Torian, as the, as the league has gotten a, a little bit smaller, obviously we have the, the small ball four, right? That That's out there these days. You've played some small forward, some power forward. How do you, where your game is right now, where, which position do you see yourself, you know, best acclimated to? Oh, well, I think you kind of answered it. Um, I can go from three, four. I mean, in my career, I've played some five, depending on the situation, um, time and score. But I mean, it's just wherever I'm, wherever I'm asked to be, and wherever I'm um, told to try to affect the game, that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, Gerson, just when you were looking at people to target and deals that were coming available. What what did st stick out to you about Torian and what you think he can bring to this roster? Uh, you know, the versatility that he brings is important offensively and defensively. He's played in a similar system in Brooklyn and had a lot of success there, uh, which is a good fit for us. Uh, we want to balance out our roster with guys who can defend multiple positions, that can defend in multiple ways, and he gives us that. Uh, the ability that he brings offensively as a spot shooter is something that we've been really looking at here over the last two years, consistency in that area. And, and the focus is, you know, my job is to bring as much talent as I can to the team. Coach's job is to figure out how that works together. But we need the competitiveness. If we want to be a winning team, that competition starts in practice and training camp and the individual stuff. And you've got two high level competitors here that are going to push and be professionals every day. Chris, what does stand out to you and how you how do you envision kind of incorporating Torian into what you guys want to do? Yeah, just to answer a couple of questions, just Dane, like 
really you are in the NBA now, what you can guard. And particularly in our offense, there's really not a lot of difference between three and four. So that speaks to the versatility um, that Torian can bring. Uh, what we love is when we studied him is that his best seasons were in systems that trended very similar to the way that we play. I think um, he'll benefit from a green light mentality like all of our guys do. Uh, a lot of freedom. Um, and just, again, that experience and that versatility and, um, you know, uh, you know, adding depth to the roster and just another interchangeable piece. We'll go last questions on the Zoom to Chris Hine. Chris Hine, go ahead. Uh, Torian, just how do you see yourself fitting in stylistically with how this team wants to play? Um, I think that's, that's a pretty uh, easy question. I mean, if you look at the stats, you see guys averaging 15, four, four guys averaging 19. So um, to me, that says that the ball moves around. And um, like Coach said, that gives a lot of opportunity to everybody. And um, I think that's some of the best systems because everybody likes to play off of each other. And I think that maximizes everybody's potential as well. All right, that'll wrap up the questions. We'll do a photo opportunity here with Torian and Chris and Gerson. All right, Torian, thank you very much. One more. All right, thank you, Torian. We'll now welcome up Leandro Bomaro to the stage. <laughs> A 6'6 six, six guard. Leandro wrapped up his second season with FC Barcelona's primary team where he capped off a stellar year by winning the Spanish League Championship and being named Liga ACB's Jugador Mas Espectacular, the league's most spectacular player. Balmero joins a list of three current NBA players to be awarded most spectacular player in ACB play. The Argentina native averaged six points and two assists per game this past season and also appeared for his national team in the Tokyo Olympics. Let's open it up to some questions for Leandro. Leandro, just welcome to Minnesota. What are your emotions right now to finally be here after being drafted a couple years ago and playing overseas and now here it comes? Uh, thank you. I'm really excited. Uh, I wait this moment for a long time. I work like crazy to be here. So for me, this is a, a dream came true. Uh, I want to enjoy and, and work and, and, <laughs> and work. Hey, Leandro, what, what about your game do you think translates to the NBA right now that you can bring to the Timberwolves right now? Uh, this is, I want to have the team to win after my game will go along, but just I want, I want to win, like say Pat, uh, do the best of, of I can uh, and try to, to help the team uh, and do the best that I can, 100% always. Leandro, from what you know now, how different do you expect the game to be in the NBA from what you've played in in the past? Yeah, I think uh, it's so different. I saw this a uh, couple of days when I was practicing with them. It's so fast, it's more running, but I have to use to do that. Uh, and I like that, so I think it will be good. Hey, Leandro, between playing in Europe and playing in the Tokyo Olympics, um, what part of your basketball journey do you think has prepared you the best to, to be successful in the NBA? Yeah, I think uh, how I work every day uh, and how I prepare to, to be ready in the opportunity that I have. I think this is uh, the thing that... How, I brought me here, so I will keep doing that uh, to be the best that I can, like I said before, and, and help to the team. Leandro, what positions do you think that you'll be able to play in the NBA right away? Uh, it doesn't matter that. the position that the course say, I will do. Okay. 
Chris, what kind of player do you have here? I mean, how, how do you see him fitting in and what, you know, positions kind of, how can you deploy him? Yeah, it's, uh, it's fearless. The, the, the word that when I went to watch him play and practice for Argentina um, in preparation for the Olympics, first time I had seen him live, I, I said, this, this kid's fearless. Like, and we love that about him. Um, competes, he's bouncy just playing, knows how to play basketball, moves well off the ball, fits in around all of the pieces that we already have. And that gives you a foundation to be able to get on the floor and help early because, you know, you're a great complimentary piece out there. Um, and, you know, I think what's, what's really neat here, I'm watching our guys, like, this is a, this is his moment. This is a dream come true. And not only is, is that, that, that type of excitement and energy that he has right now to be here um, is what he brings to the floor. He's always smiling. He's always happy. Um, and these are things that, you know, really, again, help form the culture and the soul of a team. And Gerson, how, how does the organization help Leandro just kind of get acclimated here? New city, new country, new league, all of that stuff to just try and put him in a position to succeed. It really helps that Leandro's already made a transition. He went from Argentina to Europe, played there, and now the transition here. But we're fortunate in not only our vets, not only our players, but we've tried to do as much as we can over the last year. And this is a big credit to our staff. He's the culmination of a very powerful draft class that you had Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, and we're just as excited about Leandro as well. That's really going to change the future of our organization. And that's very exciting that he had to wait a year, but now being here, that gave us a year to really connect with him as much as we could. It helps to have Pablo Prigioni here uh to help him who was also involved with the national team in argentina uh but but coach said it it's like the passion the drive the, the competitiveness this guy you know what you're getting every day in practice uh in games and in individual workouts uh in the weight room and we need that that's got to be our character that's got to be our dna the more competitors we can have in this building the more we'll be able to accomplish our goals and the organization has gone above and beyond to help him through this transition, but he deserves credit. His English is great, even though he gets nervous sometimes. Uh, the community has been great. Uh, he's been around. We've had him on the boat. Uh, it's, it's been fun. It's been a fun, fun process for him, and he's embracing it. You know, to be fair, I, I don't think he had any idea of what Minneapolis was like, but uh, the more he's been around, he already found the Argentinian restaurant, so <laughs> that's a good start. But Pablo's been a great mentor for him. I know Coach will do great work with him, but it's part of who we are and what we're about. We have a couple questions on the Zoom. We'll go to Chris Hine first. Chris, go ahead. This is for either Gerson or Chris. Just what sort of expectations do you have for, for Leandro in year one here in terms of contributing right away and, and playing time and things like that? We don't have any expectations other than to just be himself, play hard. Um, you know, we said, what is it going to take for him to help us on the floor? He does a lot of that right now. He guards his position. He guards multiple positions, and he can play well without the ball in his hands. He's a really good system fit. Um, you know, he's got to learn the NBA, both in terms of, uh, the speed of the game and also just studying, like Pat said. And I, and you can see a relationship building between Pat and Leo already, which is going to be huge because he's going to be able to impart a lot of this knowledge um, as a defender against all these guys that you're going up to against every night and all those little things um, just that keep building on itself. So the expectation is just to come in, be himself, um, stay positive, work hard, and at some point you'll crack through because talented players in the league always do. Yeah, Chris, I would just add to that. It's the focus is for him to maximize every day and being here with us, uh, making the most of this opportunity and pushing our guys. Uh, you know, you always want to be realistic with rookies. You understand there's a translation period uh, that goes there. But what he does translates to our game. Multi-position defender, improving shooter, playmaker, uh, ball handler. Uh, we want to see where that plays out. But we're going to make sure we focus on his development and that he maximizes every day. Our next question will come from Antonio Rodriguez. Antonio, go ahead. Thank you very much. I want to ask Leandro in Spanish if there's no problem. Leandro, ¿cómo estás? Antonio Rodriguez de ESPN Deportes. Un gusto saludarte. Quiero preguntarte, bueno, ¿qué significa para ti si nos puedes explicar un poco de, de cómo te sientes llegar a esta liga después de la temporada pasada que tuviste en Barça? Eh, Respondo en español, ¿no? Sí, en español. No. Eh, no, la verdad que es un sueño, siempre desde pequeño soñé con esto, eh, creciendo, haciendo otro deporte, pero lo tenía en la mente 
y ahora tener la oportunidad acá es, es algo increíble que, que bueno voy a aprovechar al máximo eh, y, y quiero ser cada día mejor para tratar de ayudar al equipo a ganar y, y bueno poco a poco ir eh, ganando mi espacio en el equipo gracias si me permiten una más muy rápida Our last question will come from Leonardo Leonardo go ahead Leandro, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes, te saluda Leonardo Torres desde Perú. Felicidades por tu, por tu firma por Minnesota. Eh, viniendo de FIBA, ¿qué crees que le puedes aportar a la NBA y cuán importante será Pablo Prigioni en tu adaptación? Muchas gracias. Gracias. Eh, bueno, tener a Pablo, eh, la verdad que es un honor. Eh, lo admiro muchísimo y me está ayudando muchísimo en la adaptación. Eh, y después lo que puedo traer es... Básicamente lo de siempre, mi intensidad, mi energía, mi defensa, en ataque hacer lo que el equipo necesite, pero sobre todo intensidad y energía, que es lo que, lo que me trajo hasta acá y lo que, lo que, lo que mejor me sale, así que, que voy a tratar de hacer eso. Just to translate a little bit, the first question was uh, how much of a dream come true it is to be in the NBA after playing in, in Europe and playing internationally, and he said this is greatest fulfillment of his dream and uh, still doesn't feel real, but... Uh, With the season starting here, he's very excited. And the second question was, uh, how does he think he's going to impact the team similar to Chris's and uh, uh, the role that Pablo Prigioni is going to play and, you know, just the ability to play hard, compete on both ends and find whatever ways he can, he can help the team day in and day out. All right. Thank you, Gerson. Um, let's do a photo opportunity here with Leandro and Gerson and Chris. All right, Leandro, thank you. Let's welcome up Jared Vanderbilt and welcome Vando back to the Timberwolves as he officially re-signed this afternoon. Last season, Jared showed that hustle, energy, and heart as he set career highs across the board, seeing action in 64 games, playing 18 minutes a night while averaging five points on 61% shooting and adding six rebounds a game. Let's open it up to some questions for Vando. Hey, Vando, just uh, a long summer kind of going through the process in the business. How did you kind of navigate it through the whole way and just to see it finally come to fruition in this last week? How does it feel to be back here and know you have some security with you now? Uh, it feels great. Like you said, to have some security and uh, uh, in a sense kind of um, not be comfortable, but um, like you said, just security. It was great, you know, going through my first uh, free agency You know, I didn't really know what to expect, but um, I'm glad that these guys gave me the opportunity to come back here. I feel like we got a great group of guys, um, great organization, and it's just it just feels good to be part of something that's growing and I feel like we're going in the right direction. Uh, Vando, uh, Coach Finch has talked about how a defense begins the second the other team rebounds the ball. And w one of your characteristics is to challenge Uh, the rebounder right away in the backcourt and then scramble back. Is that something that has always been a part of your game or is that something that uh, you picked up at Kentucky or where did that come from? Um, I would say I always had a knack for the ball, you know, just being a rebounder and uh, getting loose balls. Like I, I always had a knack for the ball, but I feel like at Kentucky it was a little more emphasized, you know, having a team with great guys and, you know, everybody's pretty much a star in their role. Um, I felt like me emphasizing and focusing on just rebounding. And uh, like I said, I spoke with Cal about it and he was like, man, this, this one knack right here can, can do it for you and get you to that next level. So that's when I kind of just locked in and focused on that. And, uh, you know, I would say it's, you know, it's been doing me pretty well. And then on offense, uh, obviously your three point range is, is not prolific. So I'm wondering, uh, it, cutting is emphasized uh, a lot here. Is that something you've been working on over the summer? And is that something that, uh, You know, you, you've been trying to figure out relative to Cat and your position on the floor and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I would say just just uh, just trying to play off Cat, where less cutting, um, setting off ball screens, just being active or uh, putting pressure on the rim every time. Just you know, knowing that Cat likes to you know is a great three point threat. So uh, me trying to counter it is you know always diving towards the basket or putting pressure on that rim. So, um, but as far as the jump rate, uh, I've been working. 
Uh, I feel like it's, you know, going to progress as time goes on. And um, But as of right now, I feel like the way I can impact the game mostly is putting pressure on the rim. Hey, Jared, with the way, like, injuries and opportunities not coming early in the career, uh, does this mean a little bit more knowing that, like, you really earned uh, that, that security that you did get today? For sure. Um, you know, I haven't had the easiest road. You know, coming in the league, I was injured. Uh, my first year, I was pretty much injured the whole year. And um, going from not being in the rotation and, and uh, due to some injuries and COVID and stuff like that, I was given the opportunity. And uh, I just tried to make the most of it. So uh, it does feel a lot better, you know, knowing that it's earned and, you know, I put the work in and, um, you know, the, re the reward is here. So, yeah, it feels great. Gerson, what impact do you think Jared will have on the rebounding for the team this year? Well, uh, first off, before I get started on that, I want to thank Kevin Bradbury for uh, being a good partner and uh, pushing restricted free agency to its full go. But, uh, we're happy to be here today. And uh, Jared's one of the top rebounders for his position. And offensively, defensively, it's what's got him in the NBA. And uh, his knowingness of who he is and what he's about is great for us. Uh, people don't realize how young he is. People don't realize the background that he has coming into the NBA, uh, but he's earned every opportunity here. And that's a story that we want to continue to tell. His ability to impact the glass on both ends, possessions are such a big part of our game, is incredible. And as he develops his skill set and continues to impact that with defense, uh, with offense, and as you guys know, defensive rebound is one of the biggest keys for us moving forward. So he was a big priority. And our coaches, our development staff deserve a ton of credit Jared and Jordan McLaughlin are the first fruits of our player development program and to be able to keep him keep them here in Minnesota speaks a lot of what the focus and the goal of this organization is. And kind of going off what you just said, Gerson, you know, Jared, you've been a part of, of both the Iowa Wolves and, and the Minnesota Timberwolves and, and alongside, you know, guys like like J Mac. Just what does it mean and how and you know how exciting is it for you to be able to grow alongside those guys and continue to, you know, be here long term trying to trying to build this thing into a winner? Yeah, like I said, it's great. I feel like um, we've grown a great bond on and off the court and being with guys like J-Mac, you know, knowing we started in Iowa and uh, was able to come up here and make an impact on this level, uh, you know, it just feels great. You know, like I said, I've seen the hours that J-Mac has put in and the work that he's put in as well, you know, staying extra hours. So uh, to see it, you know, finally pay off and to stick around with a great group of guys that we already, you know, established a relationship with, uh, I think we got a great young core, and um, I feel like we, you know, we have the opportunity to do something special this year. Do you anticipate that role may start to shift a little bit from, you've talked about sort of establishing yourself to now having a raised level of expectations going forward on yourself? Oh, for sure. Um, like I said, um, um, now it is a little bit of an expectation, but uh, right now I just control what I control, go in there every day, work hard give 100% effort, and uh, just try to get 1% better each day. You know, that's my motto. Hey, Chris, what do you think Jared's upside is in terms of a, a really young guy who is just starting to now be able to play consistently after all those injury issues earlier in his career? Yeah, we're very bullish on on Jared. I think when we well, – the reason he was a priority for us is because when you looked at the first 1,000 minutes he's played in his career, which was basically this year, he's driving a lot of metrics that really affect winning. And we were very fearful that some of the smart teams out there would also see these things and we were lucky to have them back. So to answer your question, like he's, he does a lot of things that you don't measure in a traditional box score that really affect your ability to win basketball games. So. Chris, it was quote unquote garbage time minutes where Jared was able to work his way into your rotation. How did your opinion of him change from when you got here to the end of the season? Um, well, I think my opinion didn't necessarily change. I just was obviously a discovery going through a lot of different lineup combinations. Um, as we were trying to kind of change the priorities of what we felt was important in terms of getting on the floor, um, he did earn his position back in those garbage time games, garbage time minute games. I think it was Milwaukee and Brooklyn. They were back to back and we had, you know, we had two really poor performances and he went out there and we were down 20 and played inspirationally. And if you're trying to change a culture, that has to be rewarded. And so that's really what kind of like, we were at that point, we were cycling through like all types of guys, just trying to find things that fit. So, you know, like 
like anyone will tell you in the league, we always tell these guys to stay ready. Your chance always comes back around to you. You have to be ready to seize that. And he did that. He didn't let it go. And then he helped us really finish well down the stretch. Thank you for all the questions. We'll do a photo op here with Chris and Gerson and Jared. Thank you, Vando. And last but not least, welcome back, J Mac. Jordan McLaughlin became a staple in the Wolves rotation last year, appearing in 51 games, averaging five points, four assists, and a steal in 18 minutes a game. In February at Charlotte, he registered a career high, tying four steals in just 22 minutes of play, becoming the 17th player in club history to have multiple games with four or more steals as a reserve. Also, his seven assists on January 20th against Orlando, he became the 14th member in Timberwolves history to have five or more games off the bench with at least seven dimes. We'll open it up to some questions for Jordan McLaughlin. Hey, Jordan, just the time that you got with Coach Finch after he came along, how much, how valuable is that in terms of you understanding your role in the offense and what's expected of you going into next year and then also playing with D'Angelo Russell as much as you did. How do you feel like your, what your opportunity will be like to, to see significant minutes this season? Um, yeah, when Coach Finch came over, you know, it was a learning process for me, you know, going from Saunders to Coach Finch, uh, figuring out what he likes on the floor and uh, trying to pick his brain and then figuring out what I can do um, to help the team win. He wants me to go out there and attack um, put pressure on the paint, kick uh, kick the ball out to shooters and uh, take my layups when I have them and just, just be aggressive. And so once I figured out uh, that's what Coach Finch needed for me, I just tried to do that to my best ability. Jordan, what changes when you go from year to year, um, year to year deals, contracts to having like long-term stability and knowing you're going to be with a team for a while? Does that change the mindset at all? No, nah, my mindset is going to be the same. Um, like, like Bev's mindset, you know, when he first got in the league, he, he needed to prove himself and, and I still got to do that, you know, uh, from day one, you know, I've always made the most of my opportunity and I, I look to forward to keep doing that. Jordan, when you think about adding things to your game now, as, as you've been in the league for a couple of times, what, what is, what's kind of that next step for you now that you're here? Um, yeah, just keep growing de defensively and then also just not being able to knock down shots consistently uh, when guards try to go under on pick and rolls, being able to knock down that shot consistently uh, has been something I've been focusing on a lot. And then Gertz, one of the longest tenured, tenured Timberwolves now, I mean, he, he, he came in right when you came here. What was your vision for him if you go back to 20, 2019 and, and what he could kind of become and where he is today? He's one of our elder statesmen here. <laughs> now, nah, Jordan's story is incredible. Uh, you talk about a guy who came in undrafted, uh, battled around the G League. Uh, John Luca had him in, in Brooklyn. And uh, the opportunity to bring him here when we came over was a, was a focus of ours. We loved his character. We loved what he was about. Uh, you know, brought him in the summer league and really impressed us. Uh, showed us that he had a lot of potential showed us that he was a good fit for our system and we were at heavy need for point guard at that point and our guys were pretty unanimous like we wanted to take a bet on J-Mac and to see an individual who has to fight each day and not to worry about two-way dates or travel dates or practices or this and that like that's tough and I Vando's the same way it's it's so it sounds so easy when you tell a player hey stay ready you're not playing you know you're just practicing you're not getting opportunities in games stay ready uh, for them to be here today, uh, it speaks to who they are, their character, their work ethic, their professionalism. They stayed ready and they made the most of that opportunity. But Jordan has continued to answer the call. Every situation we take injuries, we, we need, you know, the, his development in Iowa was huge. The way he impacted things there, the way he helped our players there, coming back, being a guy that really pushed our guys in practice. And when he got the opportunity to play, he did it. And uh, that speaks a lot to us. We really feel like he's just scratching the surface in terms of the type of player that he's going to be. Uh, hey, hey, Jordan. Um, and so in these first you know, couple of years that you've been with the Timberwolves, um, you know, you've obviously learned a lot in, in who you've played with and 
and where you've played with, with bringing in a guy like Pat, you know, what, what are you most excited to, to learn from somebody like him, given his background in the league? Yeah, it's going to be great. You know, defense is one thing that I want to get better on and that's the perfect guy to learn from. You know, he's able to guard multiple positions and he's undersized like me. So to be able to pick his brain every single day is going to be, it's going to be great for me and not only myself, but the team as well. Uh, and, and then for Chris, um, just what stood out to you the most about, about J-Mac when, when you first came in? Um, and he obviously w was forced to play more with, with D'Angelo being out. What, what stood out to you the most about, about his play, whether it be you know, on the floor in a game or in practice? Yeah, I, lo I love his maturity. Um, I love the fact that he plays with like a speed of his own. You know, we want him to play fast, but he's never out of control. Um, and he plays within the flow of the game. Um, and then we were just better with him on the floor. Like when we had the opportunity to play him and, and D'Lo uh, together, I thought that was a really nice combination. And I see combinations of Pat and uh, J Mac on the floor together. Like, again, just another guy that we can move around and play with lots of different, you know, uh, other players out there on the perimeter. Hey, Chris, picking up from that a little bit, just in terms of what you, that guard rotation has, you know, your ability to, I guess, mix and match depending on matchups, depending on who's playing well. I mean, what kind of flexibility does that give you as a coach to really kind of tinker and, 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 and deploy different lineups? Yeah, I, get, I mean, it gives us great flexibility, John, as we've talked about through the whole, the whole afternoon here, which is really the key to modern roster building. And it makes you deeper. And that's one thing that we, we were, you know, at times we were thin at the point guard spot just because – whether it be COVID, injury, just, you know, maybe didn't have enough bodies there, or enough capable handlers that could really initiate an offense. Um, and fortunately, the way that we like to run things, like, you know, we don't, we, we just expect guys to kind of do a few things and then be themselves. And so we're not overtaxing the point guard. But when you have natural point guard um, on, your, on, on the team, it's, of, of course, always a luxury. To Gerson or Chris, with the roster changes made this offseason, the guys you brought in, the guys you, got, you brought back. How much closer did you get, do you think, to establishing maybe the roster that can carry forward the culture you envision for this team? It's, it's a process, and uh, it takes time, it takes effort, but it takes the right people. And we feel good about not only the development of our young core and where they're going. Uh, this offseason with our coaches, what our staff has done on the court, off the court, is critically important to us. Uh, the additions we were able to make with, through trades uh, were key for us in that we added guys that have the experience that have been in winning programs uh, that give us what we need. Uh, but to be fair, until we do it, it doesn't mean anything. And uh, we're saying the right things. We're doing the right things. We want to earn the right to win. And that comes day in and day out. That's what we're preaching to our group. That's what we're preaching as we go into training camp. But we have to do it. I feel good about this group. I feel excited about starting the season with this group and the work that we have to do, but we have to do it. And that's our focus. Thank you for all the questions. Chris, do you want to add to that? No, I just, I, I think we've made great strides in, in, in um, addressing like the needs that we had to go, to, to go forward. I think the front office, Gerson and his crew did a really, really good job. Um, you know, we had limited bullets this year. We weren't in the draft. Um, but we had priorities and we nailed every single one of them. Thanks for all your questions. Let's do a photo op with Chris and Gerson and J Mac. And J Max, stay right there. Let's bring the rest of the guys up here. We'll do one big group photo. Keep coming down, coach. 